This is a HP EliteBook 2760p tablet computer, which if you're not familiar with the series is one of these really fancy tablet PCs HP used to do. The gist of it is it's got, aside from the normal touchpad and stick input, it's also got a touch screen and it's got a digitizer with uh, you know, Wacom hardware, so it's got all nice penny stuff where you can have multiple levels of input and so forth, which is just very nice. I purchased this thing when it came out to, at a very good price from a German uh, retailer who specializes in used laptops, and it was about 300 euros, and as you can see, the condition of it is absolutely flawless. It's It looks as if it's never been used, basically, not a hint of wear. Uh, but uh, despite that, it is a used laptop, and I've dealt with enough of those to uh, be a bit sceptical. So I figured we'd take it apart, have a look inside, uh, well, not take it apart entirely, but at least lift the keyboard, and uh, make sure there's no crud in the fan, that everything looks good, and if these uh, RAM sticks fit, I'm just going to install it and upgrade it from 4GB to 8GB of RAM. Uh, Hardware-wise, this has got to... Uh, an Intel Core i7 processor, the model number for the processor is uh, i7-2620M, which is a dual 2.7 GHz i7 with uh, hyper-threading, so uh, it's a quite a beefy processor for such a tiny laptop. Uh, it doesn't have any proper graphics cards, only the integrated Intel HD Graphics 3000, but when I run a 3D Mark 6 on it, uh, it uh, gives a score of about 4000, which uh, uh, called me a little time before using 3D Mark 6, but that's pretty okay in my book. It's certainly going to be good enough for the little 3D stuff I'm planning to do with it. And beyond that, these computers are just uh, really uh, very, very flexible. So uh, you, you can obviously put it in tablet mode. It's got integrated 3G with a plop out antenna, and you can basically use it like an iPad. And uh, I am not a fan of these modern. Android or Apple tablets, I much prefer to have a proper computer and yeah, having an actual i7 based thing with uh, quite a considerable bit of grunt behind it is certainly something which I value a lot. Beyond just the hardware specifications, feature wise this computer seems to be <laughs> basically built to have it all uh, because if we try and run through everything we've got to a few, I believe these are actually USB 3 ports, we've got the 56K, 56K modem if you want to use that. Headphone output, I think it's one of these combined smartphone-y uh, microphone and headphone connectors. And you've got a lot of actual physical buttons around a computer, none of this uh, touch crap. You've got uh, the internet button there, and you've got, uh, let's see, I haven't learned this yet. You've got a physical button for turning the wireless off, you've got uh, an escape key there, a arrow up, arrow down and enter key, uh, a screen rotation key, and you've got uh, some physical volume keys in there, which is a really nice touch because I personally do not like touch buttons which are way too common in mm, basically every HP model after this generation, and even some before it. Uh, Connectivity-wise, though, we aren't really up to par. We've got, you know, the USBs, we've got a Firewire port there, a couple more USBs there, Gigabit Ethernet, actually an e Intel controller, VGA, power input, and uh, that's about it. Oh, and we've also got a fingerprint reader there, uh, which is very handy if you want to log on to Windows uh, while you've got it in tablet mode. And you've got this kind of cool little HP keyboard lighting thing which works better than you'd expect. And of course a webcam. Uh, what else? I'm so sure I'm missing something. Yeah, I think that's about it really. So with no further ado, let's just uh, turn this thing off. If I can manage the screen rotation. And uh, take it apart have a little look inside to see what kind of a condition it really is in. Uh, originally this thing actually did come with a 320 gigabyte hard drive which I've uh, upgraded to a cheaper 120 gig SSD so uh, we're not going to be touching that. Uh, I certainly <laughs> uh, did not enjoy the performance of the original drive, it was hardly impressive but uh, with the SSD 
there's a this thing basically runs like a rocket because you've got a say to six gigabits per second and everything so that's certainly a quite nippy little machine but yeah we're we're interested in the hardware so let's just get this apart and if we flip it on its back it really becomes obvious what to had just how great a condition this machine is in because the entire thing is coated in this uh, kind of rubberized finish which uh, uh, as you may know has a tendency to turn kind of icky with time uh, but on this particular computer it's just in absolutely gorgeous condition it, it basically looks like a brand new machine so uh, whoever's been using this machine has certainly uh, either taken care of it or more likely it's just been uh, sitting for most of its life because yeah you're not gonna have a machine this fresh if you're actually using it I'm quite certain so it comes apart pretty easily probably won't remove the battery first uh, and uh, for the record this battery I got with it uh, it has like 11 cycles on it even though it's the original battery from uh, 2011 so that also does kind of suggest that these uh, laptops might have been surplus for quite a long time and that the uh, lapstar.de store I purchased it from has just uh, gotten them very cheaply after they've been sitting for a quite a long time I believe the retail price for these uh, would have been about 1800 euros so for a price of 300 shipped uh, I'm not complaining yeah, this uh, hatch is also made out of metal, very, very thin aluminium, but still, it's metal. And the actual computer, uh, is, it seems to be built around a quite sturdy magnesium frame. This, it's certainly metal coated at least, but it doesn't feel like plastic at all. This feels a lot more like actual metal. Uh, the keyboard screws seem to have a little spring attached to them, and they don't seem to actually pop out, they just remain there. That's a very nice touch, I must say. Very useful. And here's our first uh, original memory module, which is what we're out to get. And this is a Hynix 2GB uh, PC3 10600S910B1 timing. So I think my little spare 4GB module should fit just fine, because one is uh, rated 12800 at 11 uh, nanoseconds, and the other is a uh, 10 600 at 9 11 as well so yeah these are going to fit just fine in my computer let's just shove the first one in right now actually let's just get the a better one on the bottom side so that uh, it's easy to remove if I ever want to steal it for something alright I think we are out of keyboard screws now and uh, this should just uh, pop out I've got it on fairly a certain grains that the keyboard should just uh, have a couple of little yeah, locking tabs on top and then it should just uh, pop out so we'll give it a go there we go, keyboard's out and that looks mint. And that looks about as clean as you could expect from a brand new laptop, to be honest. Uh, even if we have a look at the underside of the keyboard, uh, there's a little bit of grime there. But uh, yeah, there also seems to be a little bit of a witness mark there, perhaps from someone who's been cleaning this out, because I would expect this to have been cleaned but it could also just be uh, production. This really does look as if it has never been dusty though. It looks absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, if we look right into the fan we can see that there's a very slight hint of dust coating on the blades. I have to grab a Q-tip and give that a rub, this is going to come off. Yeah, that does come off, so that would hint that uh, we actually haven't cleaned this because uh, uh, the fact that that comes off that would have come, that would come off even if you were to just blow it out with compressed air. So I would actually wager that this laptop has not been cleaned out prior to shipping, which is excellent news because that means that 
it, it hasn't been used enough to actually gather any crap inside of it. You know, it doesn't take long at all, especially in an office environment, to gather crap in the fan of a computer, because and anyone who's been doing IT in an office environment is gonna know that the only dust you have in an office is that li really fine grain stuff which doesn't get picked up by the cleaning people. And that's the kind of crap you get in with your computer. So we are dealing with an almost brand new computer here, which is very unusual for this channel, I must say. Uh, so moving on with the actual goal of this disassembly, we have our other module here, which is uh, identical to the one we picked out earlier, 2 gigabytes PC10600. So I'm just gonna shove this one in there instead. This is a four. No, this is the other one. Uh, this is the four gigabyte module I had in store, and uh, I'll let it run a bit of memory testing. So that would that's gonna leave us with a really tiny little computer with a 2.6 gigahertz i7 and eight gigabytes of RAM, which is uh, bordering on silly. And when you're putting memory into the internal slot, it's uh, always a good idea to just put some isopropyl alcohol on the stick and slot just to clean it out a bit because it's such a bother getting this out if it decides to go haywire and give you RAM issues. And while it's running the we can have a bit of a closer look on the top side of this, uh, uh, well, motherboard plate, I guess. Uh, we do seem to have a manufacturing date here. Uh, 110903, so depending on whether or not that's American or a proper standard, that's going to be early or late 2011, which uh, coincides with all the other dates I've seen on this and the processor generation as well. And apparently you need to watch out for this flap. Okay, uh, right here by the CPU fan we've got uh, all these wires going up for towards the screen assembly. I have noticed that this thing has absolutely excellent uh, Wi-Fi connectivity. It's It's got better reception than any of my other computers, even the big 17-inch ones I usually use. And we've got probably two wireless LAN antennas and two wireless WAN antennas, and um, I'm not entirely certain of his final fat cable is. That might be a USB for connecting up to all the peripherals, because we've got the combined digitized and touchscreen assembly as well for webcam and microphones and ambient light sensor in the display and a bunch of buttons so there's going to be quite a bit of data coming through uh, the actual screen assembly uh, hmm. yeah, I'm almost waiting that this wire would be just for microphones or something like that because you would expect the actual USB to be going in a more RF shielded wire uh, with, along with the display data cable. And that doesn't seem to be on the top side, so that has to connect on the bottom. It is nice to see though that even if we flip, uh, turn the screen around, uh, there's no mo actual mobility in the wires here, so they seem to have done a pretty good job at making sure that all the movement of the wires is centralized to the actual hinge assembly. How long that's going to last is uh, up for anybody's guess, but I'd wait it will work just fine. I've seen a few of these uh, HP tablet computers which have lasted for a very long time until they've suffered something like liquid damage. I actually have an earlier generation of this in my junk bin which uh, uh, was in perfect condition except somebody poured a lot of water over it and everything went sour from there. Granted, I do like the way they've uh, laid out this uh, a part of the machine because you can see they've got this black plastic uh, which is going to do a lot to help the computer out if you've got liquid spill. Uh, this black plastic is going to be glued down along all the edges, so and liquid damage is going to be centralized to the connectors or uh, general areas of exposed PCBs. But yeah, this is going to be the entire motherboard is just going to be entirely covered in black plastic, uh, even though it doesn't have a very spill resistant keyboard. Uh, actually, it actually has a relatively spill resistant keyboard. Uh, the keyboard itself is likely to take damage from spills, but it's entirely covered in plastic on the underside as well, so uh, you're basically pretty much uh, waterproof around this area. You're going to have leakage around here, onto the black plastic, up here where there isn't really much to leak onto. So that's very nicely done. And you've also got these little nudges in the uh, metal casing there, which yeah, I generally like this layout, what can I say? I've seen 
I've certainly seen worse ones. I do not particularly the fancy that laptops would just have an, an exposed motherboard. Granted, the exposed motherboard versions do have a considerable servicing advantage because you don't have to disassemble the entire machine to measure around the motherboard, but yeah, you're likely going to have to take the motherboard out anyway if you're doing that kind of stuff, so it's a bit of a moot point. And if we look closer on the underside, there really isn't much to see. This is a very user serviceable layout because you've basically just got your hard drive, RAM, wireless WAN and wireless LAN cards exposed and that's about it. Uh, otherwise just sturdy magnesium casing. And this machine really does have mechanical stability on its side because I cannot twist this if I try. In fact, let's just do a little comparison. So here's a, a Dell a laptop of the same size, about 12 inches. And if I just grab this by the corners and twist, it'll make some noises and it's not super mobile, but it does it does have a bit of play to it. But if I grab this one, even with all the covers removed and apply the same force, it's not making any noise. It's not screeching, it's not crackling, and it's certainly not twisting. And that's probably got to do with the fact that this is made entirely out of magnesium. And there's something I am not a fan of about this computer, however, is this aluminium plate that we've put on the palm rest here. Uh, this is going to be relatively uh, durable in that it's not going to you know, turn all the uh, blank and uh, shiny and fatty and horrible, but it does have a texture to it. It's uh, If you wipe this down enough, you're likely to get some uh, crap on it and uh, as, as anybody who's serviced vintage amplifiers is going to know, Anodized aluminium has a tendency to get a bit ugly over time, but yeah, we're talking pretty long time spans for that. I would have preferred to see a similar kind of coating as they had on um, the old NX9420 laptop I normally use, where they basically just have a very thick, transparent piece of plastic on the palm rest, because that's proven to be incredibly durable and incredibly low maintenance. And here's an NX9424 comparison. You can see how old and used this is by looking at the wear on the touchpad, but the actual palm rest is in absolutely perfect condition despite that. And yeah, I'm gonna wager this is gonna turn icky faster than this, because this is still fine after a decade. Now, one feature which I'm certain cost quite a bit extra when these were new, and I opted in when I purchased this laptop, is the extended battery. Because, look at this. This is less than a centimeter thick, and it's got the same capacity as the internal battery, about 45 watt hours. This just clamps onto the underside of the machine and you can hardly even tell it's there. I could just run with the bottom cover and have that installed instead. But I just adore the uh, construction they put into this and the, the fact that it's just basically a few flat either LiPo or lithium ion flat cells in there just makes this an extremely sturdy piece of equipment. I, this is basically as sturdy as the entire computer. I cannot twist this if I wanted to. And uh, you will notice that it's got a big connector there. And that is for connecting through the docking station. And this docking station is there. It's, it's, not, it's probably the least impressive thing about this computer. It does have nice build quality, but it's a bit plastickier than the rest. It uh, comes with an integrated CD-ROM drive, or DVD burners thing, which is actually very nice. It seems to be very quick as well, because I installed Windows from it, and it went at blazing speed. Uh, but uh, this gives you a couple of extra ports. you got uh, uh, Ethernet, you know, if you want to just dock into it, VGA, display port, a few more USBs, eSATA, line in and line out, and of course a charging connector. The, I would have liked to see DVI or HDMI on this, but sadly you don't get that end of a display port, which is a bit of a letdown because I use HDMI a lot on my computers. But you can't have everything. Pretty nice feel to that. And this just hooks on to the underside. 
that's going to give me one of the charges there. And then you have this really fat tower of things on the bottom of your 12-inch laptop. Oh, there we go. 8 gigs of RAM installed with no issues. We've got our four logical cores and the dual-core hyper-threaded processor, and we've got 1.25 gig used out of 8,102 megabytes. So that's all nice and fantastic. So this thing should be quite grumpy right now. And the performance with the cheaper SSD certainly uh, can't be complained about. Let's just try and launch Photoshop there. It's started up in just a couple of seconds. New file. Yeah. No, thank you. We're all set. The digitizer is pretty okay. Uh, you, it behaves like your typical Wacom a tablet, but um, it does have a bit of a delay to it. Perhaps uh, uh, 50 to 100 milliseconds, something like that. But it's not too bad, and it, it can easily be used for general graphics work if you so desire. I'm generally just a fan of using these uh, uh, pen computers for general computing. I think it's a lovely way of using a device. It just works quite well for... If you've got the correct, uh, correct add-ons installed in uh, a web browser, you can really have a quite usable uh, functionality out of this, as long as you uh, optimize your Windows Flex settings a bit out of the annoying defaults. So there you go, I'm not really certain what more there is to say about this device. It's a quite decent little tablet computer and it costs just about 300 euros. I'll be certain to uh, leave a link to where I purchased this uh, in the comments section and uh, perhaps you'll get one if you like what you see. And uh, running 3D Mark, you can see we really don't have a best performance 10 frames per second on the uh, first test, which is a bit, yeah. It's integrated into the graphics from 2011, so you can't really expect too much out of it, but it's certainly going to be good for, you know, decade-old games. Not a problem. The display on this, by the way, is a 1280 by 800 pixel... I don't recall what the technology is called, but it's basically an IPS, so you do have really decent viewing angles on it. Certainly nothing to complain about, and you really couldn't do with a TN for a tablet PC. It has an anti-glare surface, as you can see if I uh, reflect my window there, so it's not one of these glossy modern displays, but it's, it has a bit of a texture to it. You can really... Yeah, you, you, you can hear notice if you rub your finger across it, and I really like the surface on it. It's not too matte and it's not too glossy, it's somewhere in the middle. It's also made out of... I think it's glass, they advertise it like that, and it feels quite hard and... Uh, well, this one doesn't have any scratches yet, and it hasn't shown any signs of getting scratches while I've been using the pen all over, and you would expect it to be a bit resistant when you have got this relatively pointy pen to use with it. So there you go, that's a quick little look at the HP EliteBook 2760P, used from 2011, which I personally find to be a seemingly pretty okay computer, and that's coming from someone who's generally been in favour of 17-inch laptops, and I do miss the fact that it has a numpad, but for the form factor you really cannot complain. So, yeah, thank you for watching. Cheerio.